Hello everyone, welcome back to Stewart Technologies. Today we'll be working more on the gripper design, adding an end stop to joint six, and refactoring the code to add some much needed quality of life changes and extra features. So without further ado, let's get started. In the last video, I came up with this parallel gripper design for the robot. It worked great as a proof of concept, but still left a lot to be desired. The biggest issue was the weak grip. The small servo just didn't have enough power to drive it. So to fix that, I picked up this larger 20 kilogram servo from Amazon that should be more than strong enough for the gripper. I redesigned the gripper from scratch in Fusion 360 to include the new servo motor. There are a few things I should mention about the new design. First, I changed the gripper fingers to make it easier for the robot to pick up smaller objects while also adding a grip texture pattern on the tips of the fingers. The servo motor is now attached to the gripper with four M4 screws and the spur gear for the linkage is now directly attached to the servo instead of using a servo horn like before. I ended up using two extension springs to help further increase the grip strength and hopefully reduce some of the mechanical strain on the servo. And finally, I modified the base so that the entire gripper can be attached to the robot's end effector plate with just four M3 screws. A couple of commenters gave me great advice for how I should go about reducing the friction on the gripper linkages during movement. For now, I was able to reduce the friction by using lock nuts that aren't fully tightened. This, of course, comes at the cost of rigidity. I think I'm going to go with nylon bushes in the future, but I have yet to add those into the design. I most likely work on that off camera, but I just wanted to mention it and say thank you for the suggestions. Since I now have a gripper that's ready to be attached to the robot, it's finally time to finish adding sensors to joint six. Joint six is being directly driven by a stepper motor. So just like joint four, I won't be able to add an encoder with my current design without making some major changes. Fortunately for me though, Stepper motors are great at keeping track of their positions with open loop control, so I only need to add an end stop to help with initial calibrations. I was going to add a mechanical end stop just like I did for every other joint, but since the enclosure for joint 6 is pretty small, adding a limit switch would make it unnecessarily bulky. So instead, I'm going to be using a Hall Effect sensor. This is the A3144 Hall Effect sensor. It operates with voltages between 4.5 volts and 24 volts and has a max continuous output current of 25 milliamps. This makes it compatible with my existing control board with little additional circuitry required. I modified the body of joint 6 to hold the Hall Effect sensor and route the wires out the side along with the stepper motor wires. Since the Hall Effect sensor needs a magnet to trigger it, I also modified the end effector plate to hold a small neodymium magnet. With the CAD work now complete, I can start printing the new parts for joint 6 and assemble everything together. Working on the software in the previous videos showed me just how messy my code was. Since everything was in a single file, I found it hard to keep track of the different variables and functions. If I continue to add more features to the robot like joint interpolation and gripper controls, things will quickly spiral out of control like most of the world during 2020. To prevent that, I decided to refactor the code. Again. 
This time around, the code is very heavily object-oriented. I've made a few classes to handle all the necessary functionality for the joints, encoders, and gripper. This change not only reduced the number of duplicate chunks of code, but also made things much easier to read and comprehend. Sensational. In addition to those changes, I've also added extra commands for the robot. Now there's a command that allows me to open and close the gripper, and I also added a halt command that stops the robot in its tracks immediately when issued. First up, we need to test the homing and control for joint 6 to make sure everything is functional. I've modified the code to only operate joint 6 and keep the rest of the robot stationary. When I upload the code, we should see joint 6 home itself, then move to 0 degrees. Click upload. Upload the sketch. Open the serial monitor, and as you can see, joint 6 is homing. and then it moves to zero degrees. Now that the joint is homed, I can go ahead and move it to different angles using the move command. I modified the code again to enable the controls for the gripper, so now I can issue commands to open and close the fingers of the gripper. So now let's try operating both joint 6 and the gripper together. These past few videos have been very productive. I've made nice progress by getting a lot of things completed. I'm moving into the stage of the build where everything I do from here on out are really minor changes and tweaks to the robot or improvements to its software. That being said, I do have some cool ideas and directions that I could take the project towards at this stage that I can't wait to show off to you in the coming videos. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments about the project so far, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. If you like this video, share it with a friend, and make sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications when the next video drops. Thanks for watching.